Right, hello guys and welcome to today's video and today's video is going to be a warzone 2 best settings video for the elite controller as well so if you've got an elite controller series 1 elite controller series 2 elite controller series 2 core this is going to work for all you guys now the reason i'm making this video because as you guys may have seen in the channel if you guys are subscribed or have watched the previous video you will know i have done an elite controller settings video and i'm going to advise you guys now if you guys have watched that video you don't need to watch this video, okay? The only reason I'm making this video is because I am getting a lot of people at the moment, like joining my streams, asking for like specific settings for Warzone 2. And my settings for Modern Warfare 2 are no different for Warzone 2. Obviously, it's the same game. It's the same thing. It's just obviously Warzone 2 is a BR. Modern Warfare 2 is for multiplayer, you know, uh, DMZ, I guess, is part of Warzone as well. But yeah, so I've had a lot of people asking. So I'm making this video so people can specifically find, you know, the settings they want for Warzone 2, even though I do have the same settings for Modern Warfare 2. So if you guys have already watched that video, this is no different. There is no massive changes. There are slight differences in when I get into Modern Warfare 2. Like, I have changed a few things. So if you do want to see that, you know, feel free to skip to that part. I will put a timestamp down below for when I go into the Modern Warfare 2 settings, such as the visuals, the graphics, etc. Uh, if you guys are looking for mouse and keyboard, obviously, not here. Okay, this is the, the Elite Series 2 controller setup video. And also, I'm not going to be doing you know, graphics for your PC. This isn't for PC. This is going to be specifically for consoles. So if you guys were looking for, like, you know, NVIDIA settings, etc., that's not going to be in this video. So you want to click off this video now, and hopefully someone out there would have done settings for that. But anyway, today, Elite Series 2 setup plus, you know, Warzone 2 settings, like actual in-game settings, like I said, graphics, etc., will be discussed in today's video. So we're going to start off with the Elite Series 2 controller. As you can see... We're starting off with the mapping, okay? Now, as you can see, not a lot has changed. Not a lot has changed at all. If anything, it is pretty much the same. All I'm going to say is the only thing that has any effect on me is, do you see the paddle there in the bottom right with the A button? That is the only paddle I use. I use one paddle, okay? One paddle on this controller. And I think some of you are going to be thinking, Taz, you're crazy. No, okay? So I'm going to give like, I'm going to do exactly what I did with my other video as well, which is kind of offer like suggestions and how you can set this up and that. So like, this isn't a one size fits all, okay? Every setting that I tell you today isn't gonna be the setting that specifically works for you. You might find that, you know, things are a little bit different for you because one, you might have bigger hands, you might have slower slower or faster uh, reactions than I do. You might, you know, you might be playing on a monitor that's not as good as my monitor or you might be playing on a monitor that's better than my monitor. There's loads of different things that affect how gunfights feel, how your sensitivity feel, how, reactions for you like there's a lot of things that go into it so this is not a one size fits all and that's what i'm going to be discussing here so with the paddles i have one paddle on the back of my controller and i've seen a lot of people always thinking you need to have the four paddles on it comes with the four paddles unless you have the core of course which you have to buy the uh accessories separate and uh, i'll give you a guys a helpful tip on that with the core if you ever feel like buying the accessories do not buy the microsoft official accessories go on e uh, like ebay or probably amazon and just look up like Xbox Elite Series 2 like accessories, you'll find cheaper alternatives that do the same thing. You know, you will be your paddles, that'll be your, your little um, thumbsticks, your, your D-pad. You'll find all those accessories out there for a lot, lot cheaper. So don't buy from Microsoft officially. Buy, a, you know, a, a, a brand that's like, I don't know, I don't know who makes them, but there's definitely a plenty of other companies that are making accessories that work just as well and will fit on your Elite Series 2 controller. But yeah, so I use one one paddle on the back, which is the A button there. Reason being, to jump shot, okay? When we get into the game, I'll talk about it, but basically it's just a jump shot. That's all it's for. Uh, the ones that are labelled Y, X, and B, I don't have any of these paddles in. And it's showing a long paddle there for the A paddle. That's not actually what I have on there. I have the small paddle on there. Just because it suits me, it works perfectly for me, it's where my middle finger rests on the controller, and it just works well for me. So that's my advice. You don't have to use all the paddles. You can use one paddle, you can use two paddles. You don't even have to use a paddle. You don't have to. You can change like the in-game settings to, you know, bumper jumper or stick to move, etc. If you want to do things like that. But yeah, for me, I use one paddle. It's labeled A just for the jump and that's it. That's all I've changed on here. Again, you can play around with this and I advise everything from today's video as well that you go into a combat training game in Modern Warfare 2, if you can. If you can't, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for you guys, you know, who play Warzone. Possibly go into DMZ. That's the best possible bet and just go against the bots and see if it works for you. Because obviously there's no actual, like, there's no, there's nothing like plunder, etc. You know, DMZ is kind of the plunder for now. 
So I'd recommend going into DMZ if you guys don't have the full game of Modern Warfare 2 as a place to, you know, test your settings and make sure everything's working for you. Because obviously, there's not really anywhere for you guys to try. There's no, like, practice match or combat training or anything like that for you guys. But hopefully there will be in the future, you know? Who knows? But anyway, so that's it for that. Again, no changes here. You can mess around with this. You can change this around if you want to, to, you know, suit your preferences. But again, nothing really changes here. Just the A paddle on the right side. And again, you don't have to use all four paddles. You don't have to use any paddles. You can just use one paddle if you want to. It's not weird. It's not crazy. I use only one paddle. And you guys see from the gameplays, you know, I'm doing just fine with just one paddle. Next up, left stick. Uh, simple as this should be default for everyone, but make sure, just check. Everything should be default here. Your calculation will always automatically be on radial, which is fine. This is just your movement stick, obviously. Nothing too crazy here. You don't need to be precise with this. This doesn't need to be like moving crazy you know it doesn't need to be an instant response it's just your moving stick there's nothing crazy this if you know you're doing a driving game maybe a little bit different obviously we're not talking about racing settings here but yeah nothing too crazy here just default right stick okay i stand by this saying all the time this is the big one in my opinion because i feel like a lot of people don't use this saying and i don't understand why i don't feel like people wanted to give it a go maybe people just don't want to experiment people just want to use the basic standard you know radio that's given with the controller because that's the feeling they've always had use true diagonals i don't know why people don't use it it is so precise so precise where you're aiming on the stick is exactly where it's going to do it okay exactly that if i'm aiming here that's how much you know force is going to be used to move my aim that way if i pull it all over here like it's just so much more precise it's it's the closest feeling you're going to get to using a mouse with a controller okay it's the closest you're going to get radial is a little bit different it's not as precise. I can see it's it's just, you know, you can see as I move it around, it's not as precise. It's like almost skipping a little bit. This just constant. Wherever I am is where my motion is. Like it's perfectly there. You know, I can't explain the science behind it, but trust me, I've been using this setting ever since I started using Elite 2 controllers. Well, I think, yeah, Elite Series 2 controllers. Just use true diagonals, okay? I stand by this, give it a shot. It'll feel a little bit different when you first try it. But once you get used to it, trust me, you're going to love it. It's the easily the best saying for your right stick and is what you should be using is true diagonals. So that's all I'm going to say. Stand by it. And this is one of those. I, I recommend you stick to true diagonals. Okay? And this is the one where I kind of like one size fits all. You should definitely use true diagonals on this thing. Next up, triggers. Okay. This is interesting. I feel like people don't understand this. I've seen a lot of people who also do videos like talking about Elite Series controllers don't actually do this. And I don't understand why. Now, I get it if you're doing a racing game, because this will affect your racing game, so make sure to have another profile set up for racing games if you do play things like Forza, etc. But um, left trigger, right trigger. Set these to 01. The reason being, as you can see, as soon as I press this, and yes, I do have the trigger stops on as well, so on the left stick, uh, the left trigger, sorry, I don't have the trigger stops on. However, even though I don't have the trigger stops on, because it just, for me, when I put the trigger stops on on the left stick, on the left trigger, sorry, it like I don't like that feeling of not being a full press. It just feels weird to me to like ADS and not have a full press. It also hurts my hand a little bit. But uh, when I do press this, it's basically like it's got a trigger stop on it. It just it will feel like that because, like I said, with aim down with aiming down sight, you just needed to press. You needed to go instantly. And this, as soon as I touch it, that's it. It's done right there. That's a full press. Even though I haven't actually fully pressed the left trigger, that's a full press. Same with the right trigger. Now, with the right trigger, I do have the trigger stop on because obviously, if you're using a semi auto, you want to be, you know, hitting that right trigger as quick as possible. Not all the time. Some guns obviously have a uh, limit to their fire rate, so you might mess yourself up with that. But you do want to be necessarily, you know, most of the time pressing the trigger as quick as possible if you're using a pistol, uh, a semi auto, etc., or a single, like anything, just anything really that, you know, requires a single tap. Because as soon as I press it again, that is it. That is a full press. And with the trigger stop on, you can hear. That's it. That's me going. Like, I, I, you know, if I've got a foul from, like, Black Ops 2, etc., you know, I can't really think of what gun's actually, like, quite rapid in Modern Warfare 2. But, you know, if I'm hitting the trigger that quick, like, I'm going to be firing the gun as fast as possible as I need to. So, yeah, for me, left trigger, I don't have the trigger, like, set to the... Like, I've left the trigger on default, and the right trigger, I do have the trigger stop on fully. But uh, as you can see, left trigger and right trigger set to 01. This means as soon as you press that trigger, that's it. It's done. You are doing a full press. But obviously, if you guys are doing racing games, 
make sure to set up a uh, profile for your racing games because obviously if, once you do that you're not going to be able to control your speed more elegant you know more precisely through the corners like if you want to do go 90 miles an hour for for a corner and like, you can only press and you're going all the way to 180 it's not going to be useful for you so yeah but for Call of Duty specifically, left trigger, right trigger set to 01. You can do it by just using mirror triggers here. So you can set this one to 01 and then change this one and just click mirror triggers and it'll do that for you. But yeah, left trigger 01, right trigger 01. Next up, vibration fully off. Okay, even though in the Modern Warfare settings when we get to the game, you know, for the Warzone 2 settings, etc. in game, uh, you don't need vibration. I know some people play with it for the immersive feeling. Don't do it, okay? When the controller's shaking around in your hand, how are you supposed to aim precisely? I've never understood why people do that. If you guys are one of those people who do like, who does use vibration whilst they're playing, turn it off, okay? And I know it's going to feel weird for a few games, but trust me, you do not want the controller vibrating in your hands whilst you're trying to shoot someone. Like, if you're using an LMG or something, like, I imagine, like, the, the amount of vibration that must be going on that controller when you're firing an LMG, like, for long periods of time must be crazy it's just going to mess you up like also if, imagine being an earthquake basically it's like being an earthquake trying to aim whilst there's an earthquake going on and you're trying to be precise with the thumbsticks it's just not going to happen for you so turn these fully off you don't want these to ever be used you know used feel free to you know, make a profile to have the turn back on if you're playing a game you know that doesn't require so much precision you know maybe you want to feel like again with racing games for instance you want to feel like the controller's in your hands you know and you want to feel that vibration of the car or something then sure, do so. But in Call of Duty, when you're trying to aim precisely, do not have these on. You do not need them. And then finally, the color. Okay, you can mess around with this. Do what you like with it. I've heard orange gives more aim assist. I'm only joking, by the way. But, you know, I've got it on orange. Okay, it's it's cool. I like it. N little setting that they added to the controller. And yeah. But uh, talk about some things as well outside of what you can see on the screen here. Unfortunately, I don't have a hand cam. I wish I did. Uh, thumbsticks. So I get asked this a lot. What thumbsticks I'm using? How do I have them set up? On the left thumbstick, I have it domed. The short one with the rings that you'll get. And if you guys, you know, buy different accessories, you I imagine they'll come with, like, similar ones. You know, like I said earlier, with uh, buying off, like, Microsoft, not Microsoft brand accessories for the controller. If you buy the Elite Series uh, 2 Core, that is, uh, I, you, you'll find, like, similar thumbsticks, I imagine. Anyway, so left thumbstick is the ringed domed thumbstick, okay? it's It's just comfortable for me. It feels nice when I move, when I push on it. It just goes, okay? It just, you know, it's that. That's the main thing here. Oh, messing around my color, but um, that just that's just suitable for me. You want that to be as comfortable as possible. Same with the right stick. That's mainly the thing with the Elite Series Two controllers. All is about being comfortable when playing. That's the whole idea of setting the controller up this way, is so that you feel comfortable while playing. Like it's not a stress on your hands. You know, things easier to do, like using the paddles, etc., instead of moving your thumb from the thumb stick to the to the buttons. And you know, it's just to be more comfortable and. That's more comfortable for me on the left thumbstick. On the right thumbstick, this is where it's interesting. So I do technically have the tool stick in a way. So I do use another product, and I am not sponsored, by the way, by them in any way, shape, or form, which is Control Freak uh, on my right thumbstick. So basically, I have the original Xbox, like the default Xbox sticks that you get on the current Xbox One controllers. However, on top of that, I do have a Black Ops 4 tool thumbstick okay it has a tool thumbstick on it on top of that stick so it's basically it's a rubberized grip that is taller and you know a lot bigger as well for my thumb i do have quite big thumbs that sits on top of that and you know makes it easier for me to control my aim and it's more precise having a taller thumbstick okay this is something that i feel like people should learn no having a taller thumbstick is way more precise than having a shorter thumbstick you're just able to be more precise with your movements like with the aiming etc uh, there is a science behind it, I believe. If you actually go to a Control Freak website, they actually showcase this in a video about, like, you know, the thumbsticks being taller and shorter, etc. So, I would recommend, guys, that you get used to using a taller thumbstick on your right thumbstick. It is a lot better for you, trust me. It is way more precise and way better to aim with than using a normal, you know, default stick or even a mid stick. A mid stick is fine, you can try that. But I go for the tool thumbstick. So if you guys don't have a control freak or don't want to try a control freak, which by the way, the products are really cheap. Again, I am not endorsed by them. I don't receive any products off them at all. But their products are really good and durable. This is a Black Ops 4 thumbstick. So I have had this since Black Ops 4. That's quite a long time, okay? And still, the rubber's still on there. It's still fine. The bits of plastic, the grip to the, the thumbstick, still on there. It's still working perfectly fine. No problem at all. But if you guys want to replicate that in the best way possible, with the Elite Series 2 controller, if you don't buy the core, that is, it does come with a tall thumbstick. It's a little bit different to this thumbstick, like it's not as big as my thumbstick, 
but it is taller. It's it's well, is the same height. It's basically the same thing, and you know will do the same job as this. It's just not as comfortable for me, so that's why I use the Black Ops Four Control Free. And then finally, what are we getting on to? Uh, I've done the tensions controllers. Yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, actually, the tension of the thumbsticks. Before I forget, okay, I always normally forget this. Left thumbstick default doesn't need to be anything crazy. Doesn't need to be more stiff to use. It it just doesn't. Okay, you left thumbstick, you just leave it as it is. The right thumb stick. I have this on maximum tension. Okay, so what that means is this is is as like you know this is there's the most resistance possible on that thumb stick. And the reason for that being is with there being more resistance, that stops me from like you know having those moments where like I might actually accidentally like flick off of the target or something because I'm not able to actually you know I don't know have a, like a nervous moment or something. You know, let's say I'm in a one v one, get a little bit nervous in the war zone. You know. So down to a 1v1 to win the game. And, you know, you get, you get a little bit nervous, you know, the boys are watching, etc. But, yeah, so the thumbstick is on its maximum tension. It allows you to be more precise. Again, it feels it stops me from, like, pushing too far or pushing too little. It allows me to control my thumbstick to the way I want to. That's basically the gist of it. Is So, basically, if I were you guys, use the maximum tension. You can use it to the mid-tension. It's up to you guys, but I go with maximum tension. It you know makes it more precise for me. I feel like having that amount of resistance makes it a lot more easier for me to control my right thumb stick in those gunfights. So yeah, that is the settings for the Elite Series Two controller. Again, this will work with your Elite Series One. This will work with your Elite Series Two Core. They're all the same. Anything apart from the Elite Series controllers for Xbox will work with these settings. And like I said in my previous video, you can go into the comment section as well and feel free to leave comments after I've done today's video. Uh, asking about specific things if things aren't you know things aren't clear to you or you want to know certain other things but um yeah so that's it for the elite series controller uh segs and we'll move on to the modern warfare 2 things in just a second but a uh, final piece to like kind of give a mini review because i know some people also come onto these videos for kind to kind of know whether they want to buy this controller or not uh the controller is fantastic okay i've had this controller for a while now uh the only thing is and i will say this you do need a warranty, okay? These controllers aren't the most durable, okay? The one I currently have is fantastic. I've got no dr uh, stick drift or that. I know that's a big complaint with these controllers that you do get stick drift after a while. I've had this controller for a year now. I have no stick drift. I do have, the, however, the three-year warranty on it, okay? Now, I bought mine off of Amazon, and it gave me a three-year warranty with it. I had to pay extra. Trust me, it's worth paying extra because, yes, you do get the one-year free warranty with the controller, but once that one-year warranty is done, that's it. You have to go out and buy a new Elite controller or get it repaired. Which, And I'm going to be honest, getting it repaired is about the same price as buying a new Elite controller anyway. So if I were you guys, get an extended warranty wherever you get it from, whether it be Argos or, you know, whatever companies in America, I'm not even sure whether, you know, Walmart, etc. Whatever, like, warranty they're offering you, take it, okay? It doesn't matter if it's $30, 30 pounds, whatever it may be. Just take it. If it's a three-year warranty take it you will you will probably need it i imagine with this controller because again great controller but it's not as durable as it should be i feel that's the only downside to this controller other than that the ability to customize you know change things is fantastic so yeah that's my that's my personal thing on it it's a great controller it's fantastic does a load of amazing things a lot of things better than other controllers on the market such as scuff etc you know the ability to customize it the way you can and right now as well, if you actually buy an Elite Series 2 controller, I'm pretty sure you can like you know color customize the controller now. You can actually change it to red, blue, green with their Xbox, uh, what do you call it? I don't know what it's called, but you can change the controller like colors, etc. and make it like cool and you know good looking, especially with Christmas coming up. Perfectly good Christmas present in my in my you know in my eyes. But uh, me, I've just got a black default one. Unfortunately, I had this controller before they were able to customize it and you know add the red, the blue, the greens to it. You can change the thumbstick colors, etc. But yeah. So that is my overall review of it. Great controller, great customization. However, you do need a warranty. Make sure to get a warranty. You will massively need the warranty if you want this controller to last. So yeah, we're going to move on now. I'm going to do a cut and I'm going to go into Modern Warfare 2 and bring up my Warzone 2 settings, sensitivity, etc. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the Modern Warfare 2 slash Warzone 2 settings video. Right, hello and welcome back guys. Welcome to the section two of today's video and also welcome to those guys who skipped the Elite Controller part because obviously, you know, you maybe don't want the Elite Controller and you just care about the settings for specifically Warzone 2. That's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. Uh, like I said before at the start, for those who are watching the Elite Controller segment of, the of today's video, 
if you watched my previous video on the Elite Controller settings and Modern Warfare 2 settings specifically for Modern Warfare 2, these settings are pretty much going to be the same, okay? So I do advise if you were looking for something different from that previous video, these are basically the same. There are some slight differences and I will talk about a few things that have also like changed since that video about what a month ago now, I believe that video was. Because some things have changed in game that, you know, some people have like, there's kind of conspiracy theories about aim assist, etc. And I'll kind of address those whilst talking about my settings here. But these settings will work for Warzone 2. Again, the reason I'm making this is because I've had a lot of people asking for specific Warzone 2 settings. They are the same for Modern Warfare 2. They are basically the same. I have done some, a few changes, but as far as my Elite Controller settings video, like as Elite settings uh, actually went, like I haven't changed anything crazily with the controller, like at all. But here are the Warzone 2 slash Modern Warfare 2. Okay, these do work for both. It does work for both. I don't change them for depending on which one I'm playing. It works for both. I, I keep them the exact same. But yeah, these are my Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 slash Warzone 2.0. I don't know what people like to call it. I call it Warzone 2. Does anyone actually call it Warzone 2.0? Anyway, let's get into it. So, the controller, okay? Edit button layout, I have it on tactical. Uh, all that means is my melee is B and my stance change is, you know, like uh, sliding and diving is on the stick. That just means if I want to slide somewhere or I want to crouch, it's on my stick. I don't have to move over to the B button. Yes, I do know I have paddles on the back and I could easily map that to a paddle. But like I explained in my Elite Controller section, uh, I only like using one paddle. I can't get comfortable with using two paddles or even three or four paddles. I'm just very comfortable using one. And I'd much rather just use the thumbstick to crouch on it. It just, it just sets well for me. Like I said, you can customize the controller however you want. You, could, you don't even have to use tactical. These are just what I'm using and what I find works well for me. And like I said, use, this, use these settings as a baseline. But feel free to change them around if you want to, you know. This isn't a one-size-fits-all. Things do change for different people. And, you know... It can work for you. It might not work for you, but I'd, I'd, like I'd say, I'd say experiment around with these and, you know, see what works best for you. But anyway, let's move on to the next bit, which is the flip section, uh, you know, flipping LB to LT and RB to RT. I know some people do this on PlayStation controllers. You can do that if you want to. On Xbox controllers, I would not recommend this. I don't see the point in this. Uh, yeah, that's turned off, basically. Stick layout preset. I don't do anything with this. I don't know if other people with controller variation. Turn this off. You do not want the controller vibrating in your hand whilst you're playing. I don't see why you'd want this. So just turn this off. You do not need this whilst trying to aim. It just it just throws your aim off. Next up, we're going to quite an important part, which is your aim sensitivity, okay? Your horizontal and vertical stick. Recommendation, okay? I'm just going to give you a flat baseline. Obviously, I'm using 5.5 five with a 1 here, and there's no difference here. These are all on 1 as well. But um, yeah, for me, 5.5, five, just got it on 1. Works perfectly fine for me. I'm very precise. The aim assist in this game is very strong as well anyway. But baseline, I'd say anywhere between 5 and 8 is where you want to be if you're trying to be precise in that. If one of those people wants to hit clips and stuff, you know, you can. You can go use a 14, 20 sensitivity, whatever it is you can go up to now, I believe. Is it 20? Yeah, you can go up to 20. I know some people can play on 20 because, they, you know, they're just able to, which is perfectly fine. But, you know, that's something you've got to ask yourself. Are you being as accurate as possible because you're playing on a 20 sensitivity? Because even though you're playing on a 20 sensitivity and, you know, it looks flashy, you can move, you spin around and turn on someone and that. If you're missing your shots, you know, you're not going to be hitting those clips that you want to hit or you're not going to be hitting those shots that you want to hit. And you, you're just going to be dying for no reason. It's cool, you know, to play on a 20 sensitivity. It looks flashy in that. But if you're missing your shots, you know, you're not going to impress the boys, right? If you're playing a squad of four, you know, you're know you going to be that one who's going to get dropped for the other friend, okay? So make sure you're hitting your shots. Make sure the sensitivity is set up right for you. And also, there's something else that affects your like a big sensitivity or the way it feels anyway, will be your field of view slider. So I'll talk about that when I get to that point. But make sure when you're setting up your six sensitivity that you, know, you take into account what your uh, field of view slider is. Because even though you might feel like you're not getting the right balance, it also might be down to your field of view slider. So I'll discuss that when I get to that. Uh, next up... Aim down sight behavior is hold. Don't see why there'd be any difference. Uh, again, automatic sprint off. Okay, I know in previous games, like to do with Modern Warfare, or any game since Modern Warfare really has had like the ability to have automatic attack sprint. Because there is no ability to slide cancel, and thank God for that. Okay, I hate slide canceling. I think it's terrible. Yes, there was a little bit of a skill gap with it, maybe. But let's be honest, breaking someone's camera, you know, making it... I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't believe, like, it should uh, exist. I don't think side cancelling is the way forward. I do think there should be a bit more of a skill gap in this game, like the ability to aim down sight quicker from after spreading should be a thing. Also, strafe speed should be a little bit, like, faster if we're not going to have a tax... Uh, the ability to slide cancel. 
But, you know, that's a debate for another video. I'm not going to talk about that today. But automatic sprint, turn it off. You do not need this. If you ATS in this game, you're just going to get caught sprinting. You're going to get killed so often, okay? It does not work well in this game at all. Equipment behavior, hold. Uh, double tap ADS to weapon mount so you're not accidentally, uh, you know, weapon mounting. I don't actually use that this often in this game. It doesn't seem to be that useful for me. At least I find it that way. You know, even in Warzone, I don't find myself uh, weapon mounting too often. And that's it. Armor plate behavior. I just got on apply one just so I'm not caught, you know, applying armor plate after after armor plate after armor plate. Because a lot of times you do get caught, you know, with, you know, you're trying to armor plate and then boom, someone comes running around the corner that you didn't expect. So, yeah, just watch out for that. I keep that on apply one. I have this on tap to reload. I know people will change this for Warzone to probably prioritize inter interact, etc. or tap to interact. Feel free. I like it on tap to reload. It just feels, you know, normal to me. I haven't experimented with this too much, but it feels normal to me. Advanced, okay. Let's get into the conspiracy theories. So since I made made that video a month ago, people have spoken about Black Ops Aim Assist, okay? So obviously you want your Aim Assist on. Do not turn this off. For whatever reason, if you turn this off, turn it back on. Aim Assist type, Black Ops, okay? This is still the best Aim Assist type. It does feel a little bit different. It doesn't feel as strong as it did. But like I said in that previous video, Black Ops Aim Assist was completely busted at the start of the game, okay? It was like basically aimbot okay it was doing it for you it's not as strong now but it's still amazing i don't know why people think like it's terrible now some people like have put comments saying that like it's terrible and it got nerfed and all this and yeah it might have been nerfed it might not have been there's no actual proof that it's been nerfed but it's still the best aim assist type it is easily the strongest aim assist type which is what you want you know you do want that kind of aimbot feeling that when you stick onto you know, when you aim onto someone that it sticks and the black ops aim assist does that so do not change this. I would still recommend this. This setting is still busted, in my opinion. Aim assist type, Black Ops. Keep it on this. ADS aim assist, of course. Oh, it's only available in single player anyway. I don't know what that's for. That wasn't there before. I don't think anyway. I can't remember now. Um, aim response type, curve. Dynamic. Why would you not use dynamic? Paired with those who did watch the Elite Controllers part, where you saw that I had it set on true uh, true diagonals or true calculation, whatever it is. But um, yeah, you want that with the dynamic response curve type. It's amazing. As he says, the reverse, reverse reverse S curve mapping for fine aim control. Basically, in those instances where you want to snap onto people in close range, you can. It will be quick. It will be fast. It will be able to do what you need it to do. And then at those longer distances when you want more precise stick movement, it will do that as well for you. So definitely want this on dynamic. If you aren't using dynamic by now, what are you doing? You can use linear. I've seen people have success with linear. By Dan but dynamic is the best of both, both worlds. You know, linear is like one of those. It's probably better for more up close. Standard is kind of the middle ground, sort of. But dynamic is just the best of both worlds. It is easily the best aim response curve type, and you should be using this. Uh, I've got this set to one. This to instant, so that your you know ADS sensitivity is instant. As soon as you do ADS, you are feeling your ADS sensitivity. Input dead zones. This depends on how new your controller is or how old your controller is. Uh, left stick for me and right stick I've got 0 0.05 I could possibly have them lower but I've decided to keep them at 0 0.05 you know through wear and tear like my left stick and right stick will wear out obviously through use, high use high usage of the controller but I've kept mine on 0 0.05 that's what I'd recommend as the lowest you guys should go to unless you've got a new controller then feel free to try it on 0 0.00 but basically as long as your controller isn't you know your character isn't moving or your aim isn't moving on the screen you should be fine to have this quite low. Try and get this as low as possible. If you start to see, you know, your character moving or, you know, like start like moving away with his aim or start moving like his feet on the floor when you're not touching the controller, then you need to, you know, bump this up a little bit. Uh, these are left on 0.99 and then left trigger, right trigger. I've got these set to zero. This is just so, as you can see, adjust how much the trigger must be pressed to be considered. Have this on zero. So the moment you press the controller or press the trigger, sorry, you know, that trigger is going. As soon as you press the left trigger to aim, you are aiming. As soon as you press the right trigger to shoot, you are shooting. Like, you want that to be instant. You don't want any delay with that whatsoever. Otherwise, it's going to feel a little bit odd, you know, and you might lose a gunfight because of that. Uh, tactical sprint behavior. This is the only thing I changed here. Single tap to run, okay? This makes it so you tactical sprint from running, okay? This, this will save your controller in the long run. This means you don't have to double tap to tactical sprint. And like I said earlier, I know with ATS turning an automatic attack sprint off because, you know, it isn't amazing in this game you'll still want to tactical sprint two places obviously if you're trying to avoid being in the storm etc you don't want to be caught by the gas etc and stuff so you want to attack sprint and single tap to run makes it so much easier to be able to attack sprint uh ground and mantle off this is so you don't accidentally mantle onto things i don't like that i don't like being able to mantle things 
happens so many times in this game where like you're near something and you just mantle. So I've made sure that's not on. Uh, everything else, nothing too crazy here. No, nothing too crazy here in the settings. Uh, keyboard and mouse, obviously, well, that's not for us. Graphics, okay. This, on-demand on texture streaming. I don't know why this exists. I don't know why Call of Duty has this. Turn it off, okay? Doesn't matter how good your internet is. Doesn't matter how bad your internet is. You shouldn't have this on, okay? If you've got bad internet especially, you do not want this on. You know, it's it just causes lag. It causes issues. I believe this is also a reason for packet loss. Do not use this. I don't know why this exists. Hopefully Call of Duty, you're like, you know, Activision, like Treyarch and all that stops putting this in the game it doesn't need to be there it doesn't do anything i don't i don't understand the reasoning for it world motion blur off as you can see between the two images you want the image to be clear and having this on does not make your image clear you might miss someone because as you can see the screen is so blurry yes it's great for being more like authentic etc being more immersive but you don't want this okay uh, weapon motion blur same thing you don't want your weapon blurring you know it's just going to cause a blur on your screen you might miss someone because of that Film grain, you want this off. You don't want the screen looking grainy. You want this to be as you know, crystal clear of an image as possible. Depth of field, I've got this on off. Out of focus blur effect is disabled. This means no blurring is going on whilst you're ADSing. Again, you don't want to be missing people because the screen is blurry. So you want that to be off. Fidelity casts, okay? You want this on, okay? Especially if you're on those older consoles as well. This will help you so much in Warzone at those longer distances where you know, you're trying to render things, etc. and stuff like that. You want this, especially on, like I said, the older older consoles. You will need this, as this just helps massively with making the game look visually better and visually, you know, improves the game. And is again very helpful for Warzone. You will massively need this. Uh, I can run 120 hertz refresh rate. You know, if you can, if you can get yourself a console that can do that, and if you can also, you know, get yourself a monitor that can do 120 hertz, please do so. Playing at 120 fps compared to 60 fps is so much more different. I can't go back now. If I play on 60 FPS, it just feels weird. So the reason I couldn't exactly play on Warzone 1, because there was a point where you could play on 120 Hertz on Warzone 1, but then something happened with an update and then you couldn't on Xbox and then I just couldn't play anymore. But obviously we can now and on Warzone 2 it's fantastic. It feels amazing. Field of view, okay. Recommendation for this, okay, even though I'm using 100, again, this isn't a one size fits all. And like I said, this does affect how your like sensitivity will feel to you. It might feel faster, it might feel slower. It'll also affect how you feel when you're running. Like you might feel you're running slowly, you might feel like you're running fast. I have this set to 100, uh, anywhere between 90 and 105 for console players, okay? Yes, I know there's some people who play on 120. However, you do lose aim assist past 105 field of view. Like aim assist starts to get a little bit weird and a little bit buggy once you go past 105 field of view. So on console anyway, on PC, I don't believe this is an issue because you have other settings that you can change to like impact that. But on console, I wouldn't go for 120 field of view. Yes, it looks nice. Yes, you can see much more because of the 120 field of view. But losing aim assist is huge, and you don't want that to be randomly happening. You don't want to be going into a gunfight hoping that you can get aim assist. You don't want it to be bugging out and messing up and not, you know, activating when you want it to because you want to hire a field of view. So for me, or my recommendations, between 90 and 105. But I plan 100, just works well for me, works well for my sensitivity. This, I forgot to do this in the last video, but this is my right thing here. You don't want your uh, the, mo the camera moving whilst you're shooting. You don't want as much, like, screen shaking, etc., Change these to least. Even though I don't play on third person as well, I change this to least as well, just in case I do. But change this to least. You don't want any screen shaking, etc. whilst you're trying to aim. Uh, brightness, 47. As you can see, the sign is available and then it's not. So do this until you basically can see it or can't see it. And as you can see, it's barely visible. So I got it at 47. And safe area. Final thing here. Make this as minimal as possible. You know, you want everything to be in the middle of your screen. You don't want to be looking out to the top left, the top right, the bottom right. You want everything to be as central on the screen as possible so that you're not looking here, there, and everywhere to try and find, you know, enemies or look for a specific thing or look at your mini-map, etc. So, yeah, have your safe area at the minimum possible. Uh, next up, going into audio. Uh, I've got it set to headphones. Works well for me. Uh, you could go headphones bass boost. In fact, I actually might change the headphones bass boost now just because I feel like that might be a little bit better for me. Other than that, nothing crazy. Uh, music volume's on zero. You don't need music playing. Uh, the music's cool in this game, not going to lie, but don't need it whilst you're trying to like hear footsteps. Same with dialogue volume. You want to hear a little bit of voiceover, but you, you do want to you know be able to hear those footsteps, which is in the effects section, so you want this at 100. And I load my hit marker volume as well, so just in case I'm shooting, I might be able to 
you know, and I'm hitting hit markers somewhere, I might be able to hear someone's footsteps. Maybe. A lot of the time you can't, but, you know, it's just there if you need to. Voice chat, proximity chat on, you know, this doesn't really matter too much. This is kind of depending on your microphone quality, etc. But proximity chat's amazing, by the way. I love also too for that. Making a video on that as well. Like, I am, like, building up my clips of proximity chat, having some fun with that. Uh, other than that, nothing too crazy there. Uh, interface. This is actually quite important. This this will help make your game better. So by default, it's on like none, I believe. So you can't get any of this color filter target or world color intensity. You want this on, okay? So put this to filter two. Change the color filter target to both so you get the world color intensity and interface color intensity to 100. Max them out, make sure they're on 100. I have on Tritonopia. Just seems to make the colors boost, like, you know, boost the colors a little bit more. And as you can see, cycle the images. You can see everything very clearly. I should probably have contested actually on a different color. I don't know why I have that on that color. Let's see what's a good color. We'll go with pink. We'll go with pink for custom. Actually, no. What's a good color? Let's think. What's a good color? Um. No, you know we'll go with pink. We'll go with pink for contested. Screw it. But anyway, yeah. As you can see, these colors stand out. Maybe we want a bit of a better yellow. Maybe. Uh, we'll do that. Custom color. Move it up a bit. There you go. Maximize that. And yeah, apply the custom color. And as you can see, these colors pop out wherever I'm looking. As you can see, look at that in a dark area, all these colors pop. And overall, it just makes your game look visually better. So I'd set it to this personal preference, but for me, filter to both, set these to 100, try to know pure, and then these, you can change the colors however you want, but obviously I'd make your enemy red and your party green. You know, you don't want to be shooting at your enemy, you know, shooting at your teammates thinking they're your enemies. And yeah, that's basically that. Minimap square, I believe that's default anyway, but you know, make sure it's on square. Don't change it to circle. Don't know why you do that. Crosshairs, I keep them on anyway. Crosshair bobbing, I guess that's off. Oh, it's locked because the, the dot is on, which I'll talk about that. Where is that? I stayed in there actually. Uh connection meter. Oh hold on. What's going on? Oh yeah, the center dot there. My telemetry. Is that not on? Oh, it's not on. Okay, I need these back on. So yeah, the tele telemetry telemetry oh Jesus, can't even pronounce it. Basically, you want these on your server latency and your packet loss. This is to, you know, see that you're on a good server. You know, you don't want to be playing on 100 ping. You want to make sure you can see that. And packet loss. In case you've joined one of those games where you wonder why you're skipping a little bit, this will tell you if you're experiencing packet loss for whatever reason. You know, you can just leave the game if that's happening. Uh, connection meter, don't turn that on. If you turn these on, you don't need to have these on. And then finally, I have the center dot on. It's just useful. I find it useful when I'm aiming to have the center dot on. It helps me to, like, you know... How would I put it? You know, get the target on the on the center of my screen. It's just, it's quite useful. I find it useful. And center dot scale, I have set to larger. And that is it. There is all the settings you need. I'm not going to go to this. I believe that will show like my you know where I live and stuff. And we're not going to do that on this video. Okay, we're not going to we're not going to sit there and uh, expose ourselves. But that is all you need. Those are my Modern Warfare 2 slash Warzone 2 settings. Again, this might be a long video. I've tried not to make it a long video. Feel free to put in the comment section below, down below any questions you need or want to, want to ask or want me to answer. I will happily answer them. But yeah, this is for those who were, have been coming into my streams and asking about, you know, Warzone 2 settings. It was basically the same, you know, as my Modern Warfare 2 settings video at the start of the game. But obviously Warzone 2 wasn't out then. But yeah, these settings are basically the same and will do the job for you. Again, feel free to experiment. Feel free to change things around. Just use my, what, my settings as a base guideline for yourself. But after that, you know, you could experiment, you know, change the paddles in your controller if you want to, you know, if you do have the Elite Controller, or you can change around the colors, etc. compared to what I have set up here for Modern Warfare 2 slash Warzone 2. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe and notifications on, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.